This video tutorial is for PSD 304. Our level 2 question for today is to perform computations on data from tables and graphs. Our level 3 question will be the same except for we're going to use additional skills like finding ratios, percents, or averages. Finally, our level 4 question, which is going to be to translate from one representation of data to another, that's something that you're going to look in video PSD 303 for because we go over those kind of problems in 303. Okay. All right, now our level two question here starts with a table where we have the estimated number of diagnoses of HIV infected people. So here it gives the age range of those people and we're gonna answer some questions based off of that data. First question says, how many total reported HIV diagnoses were there among people aged 20 to 29 in the United States in 2011? So all of this data is for uh, 2011. So I'm gonna look for the 20 to 29 and I'm going to add together the age range from ages 20 to 24 all the way up through oops, to 25 to 29. So these two numbers are going to be added together. So I'm going to have 8,054 plus 7,484. You could use a calculator for this, but I think you should be able to add these numbers without one. And I'm going to be left with 15,538. I'm going to label my answer with people. Always make sure you're labeling your answer. Also, I would like to make sure that you're showing the work, show what you typed into your calculator to find that answer. In problem two, it says how many more people in the 30 to 34 age range were diagnosed with HIV than people in the 35 to 39 age range, according to this data. So what we're going to look at is the age range for 30 to 34 and for 35 to 39. And we're going to subtract these numbers. So 30 to 34 and 35 to 39. 6,209 minus 5,285 will give me a total of, let's use subtraction, 9 minus 5 is 4, 10 minus 8 is 2, we borrowed 1, so 11, or I'm sorry, 11 minus 2 is 9, borrow another, and you are left with 5 minus 5 is 0. So we have 924 more people were diagnosed in the 30 to 34 age. 30 to, 30 to 34 age range than in the 35 to 39 age range. So 924 more people would be my answer here. Please pause the video and try the level two you try problems. You're going to try problems three and four on your own, and then you're going to check those answers um, in with me. Let's try some level three questions now. So problems five and six, we need to use this table that uh, shows the results of a survey for musical preferences of the students at PHS. So when it asks in um, the first question here, what is the ratio of males to females that like rap, what we're going to have to do is look at males and females, and specifically rap, and we want to write the ratio here in the order that it asks us the, uh, the two. So let's see how it says males first and then females next. A ratio is just going to be written as the number 171. That's males, the number of males, two. And you can use the word two or you can use the colon here and the number 60 for females. So it's up to you how you want to write it. You can write 171, 260, 171 with a colon and then 60, or 171 over 60 is also a ratio. The next question says, according to the data, how many more males like rap and alternative than females? So we're going to look at rap and alternative and we're going to add these two together. So we're going to add the number of males for both of those and compare that to the number of females who like both of those. So we're going to add first for the males 171 plus 225. So 396 males like wrap and alternative. And then for females, we're going to add together 60 and 177 to get 237. And then we're going to subtract and find the difference because we want to find out how many more males there are than females. So we take 396 and subtract 230 to get 159. So 159 more males like rap and alternative than females. I'd like you to pre please try now these level three questions, these you try questions here, number seven and eight. And then when you're finished with the video, you will check these answers in with me. This next level three question um, has a table that is going to display the results for a survey on the weekly hours that is spent working 
or in leisure time. So like activities other than work. So anything like hobbies or watching TV, that kind of thing. Um, and this is going to show the different type of demographics. So here we've got it broken down by age, by region, and by gender. So this first question says, how many more hours do baby boomers spend working than in leisure? So I want to look at baby boomers and they spend 50 hours. So here's baby boomers. They spend 50 hours working and 20 hours um, with leisure hours. So they spend 50 minus 20, 30 more hours working than in leisure. Question 10 says, how many hours per week do Echo Boomers and Gen X um, spend working and in leisure combined? So here we're going to look at Echo Boomers and Generation X, and we'll add these two together because we are asking how many hours per week both groups spend um, with, with those t numbers combined. So we take 50 plus 14. This is my Echo Boomers to get 64 hours. And for Gen X, we have 55 plus 20 to give me 75. And then we'll ta take this and total both of these together. So 64 and 75 gives me a total of 139 hours spent working or in leisure. Okay, question 11 says, how many more hours a week do Easterners spend working and in leisure than Westerners? So this time I'm gonna look at this grouping here and specifically Easterners and Westerners and we're going to take a look at both work hours and leisure hours as well as work hours and leisure hours for the Westerners. So here I want to total the work and leisure hours for the East. So here I have 45 plus 20 to give me 65 and for the Westerners we're going to take 40 and 15 to give me 55. Now, I'm asked how many more hours, which means I'm going to find the difference between east and west. So I take 65 and subtract 55 to get 10 hours. For this next set of you try problems, I'm going to work on problem 12 with you, and then you're going to complete 13 and 14 on your own, and then check that in with me once you finish the video. All right, now this question here, um, is asking the percentage of at-bats for DeWitt that resulted in a hit. So in this case, um, we've seen tables kind of similar to this before with, with some baseball players, but um, I want to look at DeWitt and his at-bats as well as his hits. So if we take a look at this, we have a total number here. This is the total number of, of bats that he ever took, and this is the total number of hits that he had specifically. So when it asks me the percentage here, I want to compare, anytime I do a, uh, a percentage, I want to compare the amount I'm looking at, so a specific amount, and compare that to the total amount. So in this case, I would take the hits and compare that to the total number, 360, to find that percentage. So I simply divide 98 by 360 in my calculator, and I'm going to get a decimal. This decimal is 0.272 repeating. So right now what this is telling me um, is that this is his batting percentage. Um, a lot of times you'll see you know, batting percentage is written like this. If we wanted to do an actual percentage though, we would move that decimal two spots over and we're supposed to round it to the nearest tenth of a percent. And since it's 27.2 uh, repeating like this, uh, our twos are gonna be repeating. Sorry about that writing. Um, we don't round up here. Okay, because we would look to the right here and we notice that this is underneath 5, so we keep it at 2, so it's 27.2%. All right, please finish off 13 and 14, and then you guys can check in your answers with me to move on to the skill sheets. Nice job. Get to work.